about a lot more, like I said, than bathing suits. It's about prioritizing yourself and the way that you look at yourself. So if it's for you as simple as I'm going to take 20 minutes a day for myself to go for a walk and treat my body well, start there. Start there. It doesn't have to be about a bathing suit. I think it's about the fact that as women, psychologically, we just tear our bodies apart constantly. Welcome back to Happiness in Progress. I'm your host, Danielle Craig. I'm an Emmy Award winner, former journalist, mom, wife, and just a person looking for more joy in the everyday. On this podcast, you'll hear stories of inspiration, overcoming, and perspective that will help you become the best version of you. This podcast is brought to you by the Mail Tribune. Check out MailTribune.com for more podcasts. If you like listening, don't forget to click subscribe and make sure to give it a rating in iTunes. Today's guest is one of my favorite bloggers and Instagrammers and someone who is changing the way women see themselves and what it means to have a swimsuit body. Meet Carly Anderson. Carly is the woman behind Lip Gloss and Crayons. She is a former elementary school teacher. She's also the winner of the Iris Award from the Mom 2.0 community for the 2019 Instagram of the Year. She's also a mom. What we really focus on today is her hashtag, Just Wear the Suit. It's a movement calling for women of all shapes and sizes to just put the swimsuit on. This has gained so much traction. It was recently featured in both Parade and People magazines. We talk about so much today, including how she had an anxiety attack the first time she put on a swimsuit, how she went from being a person who had been to the pool in a swimsuit a handful of times as an adult to someone who owns more than 80 swimsuits, real tips to start wearing your own swimsuit, how to embrace a thought disruptor when your insecurities are taking over. And one of my favorite things about this conversation, Carly's perspective as a former school teacher who has seen courageous five-year-olds turn into insecure 12-year-olds. There's that and a lot more, so let's get to it. I'd like to get started by giving you the floor to tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh my gosh, where do I begin? (laughs) I am a mom, wife. I was an elementary school teacher for 15 years. Um, I actually just decided I'm not going to be teaching next school year, which is a huge life change. And I am also a blogger slash content creator, Instagrammer. I never know what word to use. Mm -hmm. Community builder um, surrounding kind of body confidence, family topics, being a good role model for our children etc. In no particular order. <laughs> I consider myself all of those things. I'm so excited about all of the work you do because it's not only about you. And I think that sometimes in the Instagram world, and we use the word influencer on Instagram, and sometimes it can be very self-serving. Look at me. Yeah. Yeah, look at me. Yeah. But that's not what you're all about. You're very much about building a community and helping other women feel secure and have great relationships with their children. Tell me a little bit about that part of what you're doing. I started a blog nine years ago before Instagram and before Pinterest. So, you know, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. Um, And blogs really were kind of journals at that point, online journals. And one of the things that I loved was that it was really a space online where people were looking to connect with other women that they related to. I think as social media platforms developed like Pinterest and like Instagram that were very, very visually driven, naturally it became a lot more about what you saw of another person versus the connection that you had with their words or their story. Um, And it was something that I didn't necessarily want to delve into as much. I think there are people that their talent is to create amazing visual content. For me, I mean, it was the same thing as why I loved being a teacher. It was about connecting with other people. And I feel like the internet allows us to connect with people that we would potentially never interact with otherwise. Right. Like this conversation. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And that's what I love about it. So I think as kind of social media evolved and blogging evolved and my life evolved. I mean, I was a newlywed without a child when I started blogging and now I'm a not so newlywed with a Mm five-year-old. 
I really started to focus more and more on what I could do to use this kind of platform that I built to connect with other women versus potentially focusing on myself. And it's something, I mean, it, it is an amazing thing to feel like I'm providing to the world, but the reality is it fills me up too. I have always been a total extrovert. I've always been someone that loved to be a part of a group or a community. I come alive at conferences. I loved being in a classroom filled with kids. So for me, this is a very natural extension of my personality to be building a community online the same as I would offline. I love looking at it like that. Okay, so let's talk about what I really want to delve into, the Just Wear the Suit movement. Tell me about the moment that started. It's so funny because I say all the time it was a, a happy accident. Uh-huh. <laughs> I It is very much not something that I did where I was leading by example. I think I was uh, dragging the world along on uh-huh. my own journey. Um, so when my daughter was maybe two and a half, three-ish, I really had only worn a bathing suit two or three times since she'd been born. I have been uncomfortable in a swimsuit as for as long as I can remember. I mean, 12, age 12, age 13, I don't, I can't even pinpoint it. Um, I always loved the beach and I always loved to swim, but I hated wearing a bathing suit. So this wasn't new. This wasn't something that developed postpartum. It, I always felt uncomfortable. And at the time I was doing a lot of fashion on my blog. So I would share cute dresses or cute quote unquote mom outfits. But the one thing that I'd never shared were bathing suits because Mm -hmm. obviously I felt uncomfortable. Um, and I was kind of joking at the start of this, the summer when this happened on Instagram stories, forgetting that, you know, there were people on the other end of these Instagram stories (laughs) watching them. Right. And I said, you know, I just really don't feel comfortable in a bathing suit. And the reality is I should just put photos on my blog because then the internet's seen them. And if the internet's seen them, I probably won't care about like some random mom at the pool. So I posted these Instagram stories, went about my day, looked into my messages maybe an hour or two later and was overwhelmed by the (laughs) response. I mean, it was not something that I anticipated and it was hundreds and hundreds of women saying that's how I feel too. I don't see other quote unquote influencers because I never a huge fan of that word who look like me in bathing suits on the internet. Um, please do it. We'll support you. And, and so I kind of ignored it. I'm not going to lie. I answered them all individually and thought, okay, this will go away in a couple of weeks. And the messages kept coming and coming for months. Where are the bathing suit photos? You said you were going to do the bathing suit photos. Did you find a suit for your photo? Oh. <laughs> and I was like, so it got to the point where I thought, okay, I said I was going to do this thing. I'm very much a person that believes in every realm of my life. If I commit to doing something, I have to do it. Uh, so I asked a friend of mine who was a professional photographer who had a pool in her backyard, if I could take photos with her at this private pool, because I figured nobody else would see it. It wouldn't be that embarrassing. You know, I just put one photo up and call it a day and we'd all move on with our lives. Okay. Before we go on, will you just tell me about the emotions of this, the emotion of realizing, okay, I've got to do this because that can't be easy for someone who's been dealing with insecurities on this for years. It didn't bother me until I got to her house that morning. Mm. And I honestly almost had an anxiety attack, which I understand sounds slightly ridiculous. I mean, a part of me, even at the moment thought, how self-centered am I? I mean, there are huge problems in our country and our world. And I'm having an anxiety attack about wearing a bathing suit. Mm -hmm. But that's how I felt. I really felt that uncomfortable. Um, And I think it showed me how... I think that says a lot, not only how you were feeling. I mean, I would be right there with you. But I think it says a lot about our culture. Exactly. Exactly. So once I got over it, she was, (laughs) she was very gentle with me. Thank God. Um, We took these photos you know, and I basically said, only send me the flattering ones. Don't send me the I think I've said that to photographers before. Well, but that's part of their job, right? And right. that's one of the things actually that I do say to women is if you are feeling insecure, 
have someone who is a professional photographer take your photo because mm. their job is to show you the most beautiful version of yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not going to send you the photo where you're in between smiles or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, and she sent me these photos and my visceral reaction was, Oh, these actually aren't that bad. Mm. It's not as bad as I thought. Wow. Which was very interesting to me. Um, which is part of why I started this whole thing because my experience was not what I expected. I didn't look at these photos and think I look terrible. It made me realize there was a gap between my own kind of mental image of myself and what the world saw. Like, yes, I could see that I was not a size zero. I mean, that I knew that already, but it wasn't as big of a deal as it was in my mind when I actually looked at these photos, wow. which was very interesting. Um, and then so I sat empowering. on the photos for like a month because I still didn't want to put them on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and I went on a trip to New York with a girlfriend. So I thought, Oh, you know what? I'll just publish this blog post when I'm in New York because I won't, I'll, I won't think about it. I'll be busy having fun with my friend. So this blog post went live and it, to this day is the most traffic I've gotten on a blog post in a single day wow. ever. Wow. Which says a lot, right? It I mean, does. it says a lot mm -hmm. about, you know, the kind of content that we all need as women, you know, the fact that women want to support each other. And it was very validating. And I did feel a little better wearing a bathing suit. So I went about the rest of the summer and I think I did a couple more blog posts because I thought, oh, people seem to like this. Okay, it's not that bad. So the first summer, it was just me. Just where the suit was just me. And I used the hashtag myself just to kind of sort my photos. It was just an easy way to, to categorize all the bathing suit photos. Right. There was no community involved, you know, and then summer ended and bathing suit season ended and it kind of just faded off into the ether. And there wasn't, I didn't think a whole lot about it. Then I went to a conference. So not this summer, but the summer before. Um, and the, the, this was an influencer conference and it was all about community. And I sat at this conference for a couple of days and just kept thinking, well, I, I want to build a community too. And of course it was in May. And so bathing suit season was coming. And the thing that I kept thinking was, I want other women to have this experience that I had, but I don't think anybody will do it. Right. You know, I feel like if I ask, who am I to ask all these women who are messaging me saying it's so great to put themselves through the same thing? What if they all say no? That was kind of my first thought is they're all going to say no, or maybe like three of my friends will do it because I begged them <laughs> and they're my friends, <laughs> but nobody else is going to do it. Um, and I talked to a couple of people about it and they said, just try, like, what's the worst thing that happens? So I put up an Instagram post in a blog post saying that I wanted to launch just wear the suit as a community and that I hoped other women would participate. And it just went from there in, in a way that I did not anticipate at all. In a, in I have a, goosebumps. I have goosebumps when you talk about this because it's an incredible thing that you're doing for women. You're opening up a door and you're saying it is okay to be comfortable in your own skin. It's incredible. Well, and the thing that I say a lot when people ask me about it is it's not just about the bathing suit because yeah. a lot of times people will come up to me in public and say, I love your bathing suit thing, right? I, mean, <laughs> I love my bathing suit thing too. But it's not about the bathing suit. It's about the fact that so many women feel this way and it's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And the reality is this is a box that we've all put ourselves in, mm -hmm. right? I've come to realize society built the box, but I was choosing to sit in the box. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Wow. Um, and I think the thing that has moved me so much is that I don't even feel like it's mine anymore. I genuinely feel like there are women that participate every summer, every week. It's as much theirs as it is mine. I see women connecting via their stories and it, I'm not even involved in that conversation. And that's great. 
because this is about more than me. I think going back to, you know, the, the internet being <laughs> focused on, on right. these visual perfect images, this is not about me posting visual perfect images. This is about us finding other people that we connect with because we're all on in different parts of this. Uh, and I love that. I mean, there are days when I just sit there and look at this hashtag, my own hashtag that I created and read people's posts for hours, not because I feel that I personally need to answer every person or like every photo because it inspires me. It mm. fills me up and makes me want to do more. And I love that. Yeah. When you see those pictures, when you see those pictures and the inspiring words that follow them, what does that do to your heart? How does that make you feel? I think on a basic level, it, it reminds me that we never know how somebody's feeling based on their outside appearance. Mm -hmm. So many times I look at these photos of other women and think, but they look great. What are they even talking about? Why do they feel this way? And you know, it, it reminds me that community is the best combatant for insecurity that, you know, when we're alone, we live in these insecure spaces. And when we are talking about these things and kind of shine a light on those insecurities, we realize they're really not as big as we think they are. Right. How do you think you've changed from when you started this to who you are now? Well, I now own 87 bathing suits. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I know this because we just moved and I counted them all as, as my husband rolled his eyes and said, maybe you don't need to buy any more bathing suits. Just wear the 87 suits. 87 suits. Um, it's funny. So, you know, I went from taking these photos, hiding in the backyard at this woman's pool to, I genuinely don't care. That is not something that I'm saying for the benefit of the internet. You know, it's not a catchphrase. I take bathing suit photos in the middle of the Santa Monica pier in front of thousands of tourists and I don't care. And that is mind blowing to me that on a personal level, I have changed this much. Right. So let's try to unravel this for the woman who's listening and is like, I want to be that person who can do that, but they're where you used to be. Maybe they've worn a swimsuit a handful of times before how do you start? How do you start getting the confidence and not caring what everyone else is thinking? What I realized is some of this is about the fact that I shocked my system. I shocked my mental system. Mm -hmm. I had built up this wall that, and I had to kick it down, if that makes any sense at all. Mm -hmm. And I think that's different for everybody. I mean, I had this online platform, so that's what made sense for me. Obviously, that is not everybody. For me, it's as simple as, hey, if you've been refusing to go to the community pool with your kids, or you go, but you wear shorts and a t-shirt the whole time, spend some time and go buy a bathing suit that you actually feel good in. Mm -hmm. Tell yourself you're going to wear it for an hour. To me, it's all about baby steps. You know, it, if you haven't bought a bathing suit in five years, my first recommendation is after owning 87 of them, <laughs> there is a difference between an ill-fitting bathing suit and a great fitting bathing suit, mm -hmm. a big one. Mm -hmm. Do something for yourself and find something that you feel good in. And I guarantee the other steps will be a little bit easier. You know, I've heard a lot of women say, I feel more comfortable wear a bathing, wearing a bathing suit on vacation when I don't know people. If that's where you need to start, that's fine. Start there. I think it's a matter of not worrying about where you need to be at the end, but slowly stepping out of your comfort zone enough to where you're making small baby steps. Mm -hmm. Just getting a little more comfortable each time. Exactly. exactly. What is a story that has really touched you? Maybe a woman has reached out and has told you something that has touched you to your core. Oh my gosh. I could talk about this for the next 27 hours of our <laughs> life. <laughs> you know, there's a couple of, of instances that stand out. One that I thought was really interesting that I didn't anticipate. Um, early this spring, I was at a press event in Los Angeles with my husband. And he actually very rarely comes to kind of blog things with me. He 
has his own career as a professional musician and it's not really his wheelhouse. And so I kind of do my thing and he supports me, but it's not his thing. Mm -hmm. And he happened to come with me to this event because we were going to go on a dinner date afterwards. And it was an event that had nothing to do with bathing suits at all. So while we were sitting there kind of learning about the, the event and the product that they were talking about, a woman came up to me and told me that she was an editor for a fashion magazine based in Los Angeles. And she started crying and Mm -hmm. said, even though this is my job, I haven't felt comfortable wearing a bathing suit in years and your hashtag, we follow it at my office because it's important that we see this type of media too. That was like a whole other level. This wasn't Mm -hmm. a mom at the community pool. This is someone that is creating media and putting images of women into the world. And she's saying she feels that way too. I think that just felt so out of left field to me. And then she was like, okay, it was nice to meet you. Bye. And just walked. (laughs) Wow. And you're just in shock there for a moment. Right. To which I was like, wow. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So I think that spoke to me on a very deep level. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think the other thing is the times when I have interactions with about this offline speak to me in such an intense way, because it's very easy if you work on the internet to like imagine all of this only happening on the internet. I forget that like the moms at my daughter's preschool see the internet too. And, And so I think it always surprises me when someone that I know in another way says, I love just wear wear the suit and I didn't feel comfortable posting a photo, but I did it. That speaks volumes to me and honestly means just as much as people that post a photo online. What do you think you've learned about women through all of this? I think we live in a society where, you know, I taught elementary school for 15 years and somewhere along the way, these five-year-old little girls become the 12-year-old little girls who have been taught to be insecure and competitive with each other. And we live in a society where that is maybe not always encouraged, but it's accepted. Mm. I have learned that women crave community I have learned that women can be so supportive of each other. And I think we all want things like this. It's just a matter of like unraveling the other societal messages and the Mm -hmm. other things that are going on. But I think so many of us are thirsty for this type of work. Where do you think we get off track? That really struck me somewhere in that elementary school experience. We get off track. Where is that? I have thought about this so much in the last few years, obviously, you know, as someone that has a a daughter myself, it's even more a top of mind. I don't know. Literally some shift happens between the kindergartners and the fifth graders. Mm -hmm. And you can almost see it. Like as a teacher that watched these same kids year after year, something changes. These five-year-olds come in and they're secure and they love to wear these fun, crazy dresses to school and they go in to take their school photo and they're smiling and they're confident. And the fifth graders are tugging at their clothes and uncomfortable and kind of hiding behind sweatshirts. And I don't know where that shift happens, but it happens. There's like a point where the world comes in. I can see myself in that. I can see other kids that I've known in that. Mm -hmm. And now I have this little baby daughter who I'm like, How do I protect you from that shift? Do I think that we can shield our kids from the world? I don't. I don't. I think we, I think the best thing we can do as parents is to equip them to talk about these things when they happen, to provide positive messaging, to counteract some of the negative messaging and to keep the lines of communication open. Because as much as I would love to keep my daughter in a bubble, <laughs> that's, it's not realistic, <laughs> right? I mean, I would love that, but she probably wouldn't. You know, she is going to receive other messaging. Yeah, Of course she is. I mean, that's the reality we live in. I think my goal is to be a positive role model to her and mm-hmm. to be honest. 
Mm -hmm. I think it's really important for me to say, hey, this is something I've struggled with and that's okay. And this is what has helped me versus I feel great about myself all the time. And you should too. Mm, You're right. Tell me about some of the conversations you've had with her. You know, it's funny how they've evolved. I mean, and obviously she's five. Right, right. right. So we're talking about age appropriate conversation. <laughs> she comes with me a lot when we take these photos. And so even things as simple as her saying, I think you look beautiful, mom, and me saying, thank you, instead of, oh, no, I don't love this color on me. Or, you know, I think her seeing me accept a compliment is important. I think her hearing me compliment other women is important. Uh, I think her hearing me set appropriate boundaries for myself is important. I think respecting when she does those things is important. I think it's a matter of the more positive interactions that her and I have, the more it's going to counteract the other stuff. I saw a recent post. It might actually be your last post, but it's of you wearing a swimsuit and her wearing Mm -hmm. a swimsuit, and you both have these huge smiles. What do you hope that it is you're doing for her through this campaign? I think my biggest goal is for not only Lydia to see me in a swimsuit, but to see women that look like her and women that don't. Mm. You know, I think it's very easy to say, I want her to see me because I'm her mom. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, that's, and that is important, but I think my eventual goal is for her and any other child to realize that there are a million forms of beauty and that we respect them and support them all. So I think what I want her to see is that women of all shapes, sizes, ages, colors, they all look beautiful. That's really good. When People Magazine reached out to you to do a story on this, to talk about what you're doing, did you have any big aha moment like this is a big deal for women because fill in the blank? The interview with them happened while we were in the middle of this massive move from <laughs> to San Diego. So I think I didn't take it seriously until the article actually came out. I mean, I knew that I did an interview, but it was kind of in the midst of this like total chaos of this personal life change we were having. And I don't feel that I did it. It's due diligence to really like stop and think about it Mm -hmm. until the article came out. And Mm -hmm. ironically, the article published during the three hour time frame when we were at this new home, it's the first home we've ever bought in the middle of our housing inspection. (laughs) So you have to (laughs) laugh because all of a sudden my phone just went crazy with text messages and Facebook tags and this. And I was like, what is going on? And I think that's when I realized, whoa, this speaks to a lot of women because it was women in my life that I hadn't spoken to in years, college friends, high school friends, people I went to graduate school with. And all of them were saying similar things. This inspires me. This inspires me. And I didn't even realize they knew about it. I love this. You wrote in a recent post, quote, I spent my teenage years, my 20s and my early 30s feeling extremely insecure. As my career developed, I was confident in my abilities to be a great teacher, my friendships, but never my appearance. Somehow those thunder thighs were always an issue. Until I had Lydia. When I had my own daughter, I realized something had to change. I refused to pass my insecurities on to her. I wanted to enjoy beach days and pool days with her. I wanted her to have memories of her mother feeling confident and secure, even in a bathing suit, end quote. How do you think how we treat our bodies and how we present ourselves in the world impact our little daughters watching us? The reality is if you talk to anybody that works with kids, whether it's a child psychologist, a nanny, a parent, a teacher, we all know that children take in messaging way more than perhaps we realize as adults, right? I mean, I joke all the time that Lydia sounds exactly like me. The intonation (laughs) in her voice, you know, if if she's telling my husband she wants him to do something, she sounds exactly (laughs) like I do what I'm telling him. I mean, to the cadence of the words and everything. Kids are like that with 
everything, mm-hmm. including how we treat ourselves. Mm-hmm. Often, I think we don't realize that as parents until it's too late. Does that mean that I am a perfect role model all the time? I mean, of course not. That's ridiculous. I still feel insecure plenty of times. I mean, I'm a human being just like everybody else is. Mm -hmm. But there are certain things that I have had to make a point of changing about myself so that I can change them for her. I don't speak negatively about my physical appearance anymore. Do I still think it sometimes? Of course I do. Hello. I mean, we all do, but I have had to make it a practice for myself to not say those words out loud. And that has slowly, but surely changed my internal dialogue as well. Mm -hmm. I think even the things that are unspoken, like the sitting on the side of the pool, every time you're at the pool, the kids pick that up. hundred percent. I mean, hundred percent, you know, ironically, just, (laughs) It's funny how life works. This this house that we just purchased, the very first home we've ever bought, which in California is, you know, quite a feat. Yeah. yeah. In San Diego. Congratulations. Exactly. In San Diego has has a pool, uh-huh. a beautiful pool. Mm-hmm. And you have to laugh because I think even two years ago, I would have said I wanted a house without a pool because I didn't want to wear a bathing suit. Right. So then I would have been the parent. Who won't go swimming with my kid at my own house? What do you think you're adding to her childhood and her life? I hope that, you know, when the world does come in, because it's, I mean, she's going to kindergarten, she's five, the world is coming, that she remembers, but my mom still did that stuff. Mm -hmm. But my mom, but I thought my mom looked beautiful still. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I remember is that it was fun. Mm Mm-hmm. Because I think that does combat the insecurity to an extent. For the woman who's listening, who's like, oh, yeah, but not me. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah, not me. Exactly. Like, good for her. That's great. Congratulations to her. We'll slow clap. What would you say to them? I think it's a process for everybody. And I am very much not the type of person to say, you have to do this. I think... It's something that everyone needs to prioritize when they're ready to prioritize it. Mm -hmm. I will say if it's not bathing suits for you and it's something else, that's fine. You know, to me, this is about a lot more, like I said, than bathing suits. It's about prioritizing yourself and the way that you look at yourself. Mm -hmm. So if it's for you as simple as I'm going to take 20 minutes a day for myself to go for a walk and treat my body well, Start there. Mm -hmm. Start there. It doesn't have to be about a bathing suit. I think it's about the fact that as women, psychologically, we just tear our bodies apart constantly. And we don't, we don't do a whole lot of work when it comes to how can I change this? Or I'm sick of living like this. So I think for everybody, if you can find one thing that reframes the way that you look at your physical appearance, start with that. Mm -hmm. I think we look at our bodies as something that needs to be fixed. So I'll wear the swimsuit, but when I do this, so I'll wear the swimsuit when I lose the 20 pounds or I'll wear the swimsuit after I go to the cycling class and do a little toning. If I work out for five days as a reward, I'm going to let myself go to the pool. Mm -hmm. How do we get over that? I think feeling... Comfortable in your own skin isn't a reward. Those are two separate things. And frankly, I should go to the cycling class because I want to treat my body well. Yeah. You know, it shouldn't be a bribe. It's very easy to treat yourself kindly when you're feeling the most in shape or the most confident. It's a lot harder to treat yourself kindly when you're not. Do you deal with that? And how do you overcome it if you do? hundred percent. I I get people saying all the time, well, you must just be secure all the time. Of course not. I mean, of course <laughs> not. That's insane. I don't think anybody is secure all the time. Um, I'm better at catching myself now, I think. Mm-hmm. It's than a practice. I was. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm before I go all the way down the rabbit hole. <laughs> and I think what I found is now I know more what helps me get kind of out of that mindset. So if I feel like, oh my gosh, I just 
you know, look awful and I feel really out of shape or my thighs are huge or whatever it is before I would have gone down this epic rabbit hole and ended up crying in a corner and done nothing for days on end. And, and I would never have gone to the pool with my right, daughter. Right. Now I've kind of gotten to the point where I can say, okay, I usually feel this way when, right. I usually feel this way when I have been busy and overwhelmed and I haven't been taking good care of myself. I usually feel this way when I haven't had a chance to go running, which is something I love and makes me feel like my body is strong. Mm -hmm. So I need to just go for a run. I need to make that a priority. You know, I usually feel that way when I haven't worn an outfit I liked in a couple of days. It could be anything, mm -hmm. but I think that whole, I usually feel this way when piece is key. Just really understanding where you are with your mindset. Right. You know, like I said, that's going to be different for everybody. For me, and I've talked about this online a lot, um, I started jogging as an adult, not necessarily with the intention of, you know, losing weight or doing anything. It was, it was a health priority for me. And I have really found that it, it makes me appreciate the strength of these thunder thighs that I used to hate yeah. so much. Yeah. Um, and so what, for me personally, one of my first responses always is I'm going to go running and then I'm going to be thankful that I was able to run and then I'm going to move on with my day. Yeah. So I think knowing what that sort of di thought disruptor is for you and doing that thing and making it a priority does help. Right. And I really like just moving on with your day because I think with our insecurities, whether it's body or not physical or not, we can really just ruminate on them and just sit with them and I stay mean. with them not let them go. hundred percent, hundred percent. And I think the other thing, and this is where I am so thankful for the 15 years that I spent as a teacher, I taught in high poverty inner city schools. Mm -hmm. And it was always a thought disruptor for me to go into work and to realize there are people who have bigger problems than me worrying about my thighs. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, at some point, that perspective is also important. So whatever gives you perspective in life, be it helping a neighbor, volunteering in a local community organization, you know, mentoring teenage girls who also struggle, uh, calling a friend who has a great outlook. It could be anything. I think knowing what gives you perspective is also important. You are so right on. I love that. What would you tell teenage you, you're sitting by the oh, pool <laughs> and you hear that thunder thighs comment and you're about to write a decades long story about yourself? I would say there are a million other things about you besides the size of your thighs. Oh, I love that. When you look to the future, what is your hope involving this movement? Honestly, my personal goal or my personal dream for this is that this we take this online movement offline mm -hmm. in, in my perfect ideal world, I would love to have events or meetups around the country where women can have these same experiences talking to each other face to face, because to me, that's what it's really about. Like Instagram is a vehicle to have those connections, but it's not really about Instagram. It's about the connections. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. This is a podcast all about finding joy in the everyday, regardless of your circumstances, the good, the bad, the in-between. What would be your number one tip to finding more joy in the everyday? I would say my number one tip is to do something just for you every day. Mm. I think it's very easy as women to worry so much about the people we are caring for in our lives that we forget to care for ourselves. I am as guilty of that as anybody else. You know, the day will end and I'll realize that the one thing I really wanted to do was go for that jog and I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. So I think despite whatever schedule you have, setting aside 15 or 20 minutes to do one thing that you are doing just because you love it is important because eventually it becomes a habit. And eventually that habit creates a mind change. We do this a lot of times and I think we feel like we have to justify it. So I'm doing this because whatever the end game is, but I love that you said, do it because you love it. Just do it because you love it. No justification. Exactly. And that's enough. And we all deserve that. 
everybody deserves to do something that they enjoy. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I so appreciate it. Oh my gosh, this was so fun. This was the best conversation I've had in a while. Oh God, I'm glad that's the goal. If there's one thing you do today, go follow her on Instagram. I have her page linked as well as her blog and other ways to find her in the show notes. And I want to thank you for being here on Happiness and Progress. 